Hi, this is Yuri with Project Pals. Today I'm going to walk you through a project that we just published to our catalog. It's a science project designed for middle school, although it could be adapted for upper elementary or lower high school as well. And it's a project trying to answer where do plants get their food. So I'm going to click on the project and I'm taken to the project dashboard. This is a project that we actually designed um, along with all of our catalog projects for teachers to be able to take off the shelf, copy the project, assign, modify it if they'd like, and then assign it to their class. And the students will actually be able to start the project with all of the scaffolds and resources that we've included. So everything I'm showing you right now is meant to be copied and cloned and assigned to your class. I'll show you at the end of this video how you can actually do that. But right now I'm gonna walk you through the project itself. So right now we're on the project dashboard. Each project in Project Pals is divided into a dashboard and a workspace. The dashboard is where team members, usually comprised of teachers and students, in this case, it's just a teacher so far, but once the students start, they would be added over here as team members. And this is really a place to organize the project. So what are we doing in the description of the project? In this case, we're gonna really, we're gonna be investigating um, how the process of photosynthesis works. Um, we've added some supporting materials over here for the students to reference, including um, videos and a link to a Smithsonian article about what is photosynthesis. We've even scaffolded a few tasks, um, which the students can use as they are, or they can create their own tasks. Um, and basically, once they start doing a task and they assign the task to someone in the team, uh, you can actually drag and drop these tasks and let, let the rest of the teammates know that they're in progress or that they've been completed. Um, now I'm going to jump over to the workspace, uh, which is really where the collaboration takes place. Um, this is a space that's updated in real time, similar to Google Docs. So all the students could see me in this project on different machines around the world, could see me moving this piece of content without having to refresh the page. Um, the workspace is divided up into tabs, questions, components, events, relationships. These tabs can actually be named whatever you would like, and you can reorder them. Think of the tabs as really like a sequence of activities. If the students go through these activities, they'll be able to have a much better understanding of the topic, in this case, photosynthesis. Um, and so what I'm gonna show you quickly over here is the instructions box. So we've added a place to add instructions. Um, teachers, if they're creating their own original projects, can add instructions here. We added instructions that could be modified by the teacher or could be just shared with the students. So in this case, the instructions are saying in the questions tab, basically after reflecting on the resources, ask questions about photosynthesis. So we describe what to do. We guide with step-by-step um, -step kind of instructions. And then we actually have a link to a support article on how to create a question. We've actually created a couple of um, model questions here to get the students started. So what is photosynthesis? What do plants do when they get hungry? Um, and now the students are being prompted to come in and ask their own questions. So somebody might come in and open up the questions tool and then add their question. What is chlorophyll and two L's and then hit create. And now one of the students has added a question. Ideally, this if this is a group project, students are asking different questions and they're all contributing in their own way to this activity. Um, next up is components. So again, here we've added instructions on what to do. Components are really the parts of the problem. This is related to computational thinking, um, how engineers approach problem solving. You wanna break problems down into their component parts. So that's what the students are being asked to do here. What is needed for photosynthesis? What are the parts of photosynthesis? And so we've added a question and students can pose additional questions and they can, we've actually scaffolded what the components are. So plant leaves, carbon dioxide, water, oxygen and carbohydrates. And basically we've provided a little bit of detail, a little bit of description. So a characteristic or two for each one of the components and the students in the instructions are being asked to add additional characteristics so that they can basically further understand what are the components of photosynthesis. And so we've already added two components here to leaves. They would then enter the workspace and each student might pick a different component, one or two components each, and then they would actually add additional items and each one of these items basically ends up being a branch and so the, the characteristics should be related to the process of photosynthesis we're not looking for things that are unrelated here obviously leaves have a lot of other attributes that are not connected to photosynthesis but the goal in this step is for students to identify characteristics of leaves as it relates to photosynthesis they can also add images and supporting media to help support each one of these 
each one of these um, characteristics. The next step is events. Um, and so now we've started the students off with a some more scaffolding, I guess. So what happens during photosynthesis? We've created the first two steps of the event, um, of the process of photosynthesis, and we're asking students to enter the workspace and now add and complete the process. So if the, the first two steps are process takes place in the leaves of the plants, chlorophyll observes the set energy, students will then add a step and start adding text, adding images to show what's the third and um, you know, remaining steps in photosynthesis. And again, the students would ideally collaborate on, on this one piece of content together. And now in relationships, um, again, instructions unique to this tab or over in the left over here, but essentially we've, again, we've reused um, the components that we defined earlier. You can actually reuse any uh, asset in Project Pals just by dragging it back out into the workspace and then doing with it what you will. Um, in this case, we are showing a mind map and it clarifies in the instructions here, we're showing a mind map of how photosynthesis works, the parts and the relationships. And so we're taking the components and we're showing how it's related. So we're kind of combining the, the components and the events a little bit to show what, what are the components of photosynthesis and then what is this process in a very visual, sort of easy to read way. And so we've used our relationship tool to show that sunlight is absorbed by chlorophyll, oxygen is produced. And if you notice these little arrows, um, they are pointing in that direction on purpose to show whether it's an input or an output in this process. And so students would be encouraged to then go and open up our toolbar up in the left corner and create their own um, relationships. So in this case, we're going to do a relationship about, we're going to show how carbon dioxide is part of this process. And so I've created a red little directional line, and I'm going to say that leaves take in carbon dioxide. So now I've defined how carbon dioxide plays into this process. And so the students would each go in and create their own lines and kind of show how it's related to the process of photosynthesis. So at the end of this, now that they've gone through all these steps, questions, components, events, relationships, and kind of done all this work, the students are able to see, um, are really able to understand photosynthesis in terms of what are the things that affect photosynthesis, what is the process, and how does it all kind of look and work together. Um, if a teacher wanted to assign this project to their students, um, all you need to do is go back to our catalog. I'm actually going to log in as another user at this point so you can see what this looks like from the teacher's perspective. Um, and so just log in. And teacher is now logged in and he's going to go to our catalog, look for a science project. And here it is. Where do plants, plants get their food? He's going to add it to my projects and he's going to clone this project. So this takes just a couple seconds because it, it is a large file type, but essentially Tim has just added this entire project and it's now going to be up in my drafts. And so he can now click on this project and modify the project if he'd like, but he's got the details, he's got the supporting materials, the tasks, all that information has been copied over, which he could add additional tasks, um, you know, modify, add, add additional resources, and then the workspace as well. All of the instructions that were there from the catalog, as well as all of the scaffolded content is still on the workspace waiting for the students to start. And once again, Tim could, you know, change some of this. He could modify the instructions. He could delete some of the scaffolds if he'd like, or he could just leave it exactly as it is. So we're going to assume that, that Tim is happy with this you know, project the way it is and wants to just assign it he's, to his class. He's going to go back to the dashboard. And now he's going to copy the project and then assign it to Tim's class. OK. And the project has been added as an assignment. So what that means is that now Tim has a class down here. And where do plants get their food is an assignment. And when his students log in, they can actually start this project with all of the scaffolding within it. And Tim might have multiple students. For example, here, there's sometimes different students working on the same project, and he'll be able to know the difference between one project and the next by looking at the name. So in this case, this is an individual project just done by Sid. This is a group project of the same topic done by Sam and Sid. So very similar here as the students start the, the plant project, um, they, the projects would show up underneath Tim's class and Tim would then be able to actually 
uh, look at some really rich data showing um, are the students progressing on the project? How much work have they done? How many hours have they spent? Who's really been the one that's pushing, um, you know, that's doing the work within this project? So really some great administrative benefits to doing your work in Project Pals. Um, hopefully this was helpful. Uh, we, we think this is a really cool project um, that's applicable to a lot of different learners. Uh, we highly recommend that you give it a shot, clone the project, assign it to your students. They'll pick up on it in no time. Once you do a couple projects in Project Pals, you know, you, you should have the skills to then start designing your own lesson plans, your own kind of projects in here. But we're going to continually be adding to our catalog as well so you can continue to take projects um, as we publish them. All right. Well, thank you so much. Appreciate your time and uh, happy learning. Bye.